Good, good uh, afternoon. We just finished church on the way home. Yes, I have pulled over so that wouldn't be be stupid driving uh, and trying to make a video here. But today uh, we uh, had an amazing church service, worship service. Um, I got some notes so I wouldn't be uh, too long. My yesterday landscaping video, once I pieced all the pieces, is a little bit longer than I think I like. But you know, there's some really good information in it. Going to post that today. Uh, any event here. I go to Lighthouse Fellowship Church. It's in the very western end of Buckeye, and um, great church. And uh, I won't get into all of how I started there, but it's just really a great church. It's a non-denominational Christian church. What that means, in brief, is that we study the Bible rather than have some kind of enlightenment sermon. We study the Bible, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book so that we can understand what was written and understand why it was written and what how it applies to our life today. And our pastor seems to be very gifted and anointed in that endeavor. We're in the book of John the last few weeks. Today was chapter 10. And chapter 10, if you don't mind me looking down here, is all about the Lord Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd. Um, I'm gonna read to you a little bit of, of that scripture and um, We'll, we'll go from there. Uh, he says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. What the sh And our pastor explains that back in Jesus' time, in uh, 2,000 years ago, the sheepfold was a contained area where the shepherds brought their sheep at nighttime. I mean, remember when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the, the shepherds came to visit him because they were free. They, their sheep were in the sheepfold. Kind of had high walls, supposedly, and something at the top to prevent people coming over. Our pastor uh, kind of assimilated that to today having a chain link fence with razor wire around the top to keep people out. And, and, and that's what Jesus is talking to. He's the door. He goes further on in that verse to say that, because the people didn't get the parable at that moment, but um, he did say that the, his sheep hear his voice, which means those who are Christians hear God's word and stick with it, even in the, in the case of adversity. And if you don't think we have adversity to Christians in the world today, you must have your head in the sand, and I don't mean that negatively to anybody, but there's just so much going on in that realm. Uh, and those who don't hear the voice of, of the shepherd won't be saved. It's spelt out cut and dry, just like that. He goes on, Jesus goes on in that verse, because chapter 10 is mostly Jesus' teaching, so our pastor didn't feel he could improve on that, and, and rightly so. But it goes on to say that I am the door to, to the Father God, and the only way, repeat, the only way to get to heaven and to God the Father is through Jesus. Now, there may be many pathways to Jesus, and I'm extrapolating here because we have Episcopalians, Lutherans, non-denominationals, all in the Christian body, different thinking on man's part. If we can get rid of the man part and just thought about God, we probably have a huge, strong organization of Christian people worldwide, but it is what it is. So there may be many pathways to Jesus, but there is only one pathway, and it's narrow, simple, going to say Jesus is the Savior, the Lord of my life, and uh, then start acting like that for the rest of your life and keep reading about it to help you do that. And that's it. That's the door. Um, so we went on to explain all of that. And, and the key points are that Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is the only way to God and to the Father in heaven. And God's people hear the voice of the shepherd. And they know that voice and follow us, us Christians currently and those he calls in the future. Our job as Christians is not to save anybody, although I've had the fortune to save three people, but our job is to say the message and let those who hear the voice follow. The only, and we, the final point of that whole chapter is to be careful of false shepherds because their only, their only purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. So that's what our sermon took about from it took about an hour, hour and a half for all of that to happen at church, so there's a lot more behind it, but I didn't take it down verbatim. You got the gist of that, and I'm, I hope you enjoyed that, uh, as I have and will continue to. I also wanted to extend an invitation. Next Sunday, the 29th 
of this month, September, can you believe it? It's almost gone already, is Harvest America. What that is, is it's a national, I, I would gather eventually international, but it's a national movement to worship God simultaneously. We did it last year through our church at 4 o'clock. We connected to the simulcast link. And it was churches all over the country, all at the same time, obviously held at different times in their own time zone, but all at the same time planetarily. And so 4 o'clock at our church, if you live in the Phoenix metro area and want to venture over to us, uh, you can comment below in Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, or on our blog, and say, hey, give me directions, and I'll do that so I don't tie up this message. So, Harvest America, 345, we're gathering at our church in Litchfield Park, which is the very western park, closer to Buckeye. And, and 4 o'clock is the simulcast, and from what I remember last year and what we're told now, this morning, is that it will start right at 4 p.m. our time in Arizona. Hey, this was video 6 of the 90-day video challenge. I'm having a blast thinking of how I can add value to your lives. Um, and, and we're looking forward to uh, the next one. Have an awesome day. Take some time to reflect on your life and your family. And if you are a believer... Reflect with, with God in mind. Ciao.